Hey, it's BT with Tales from a Gemini. My guest today is Ali Sultan. Ali is a comic who is... I mean, he's rising up to the comedy ranks. You'll see why. This guy's incredible. If you get a chance, watch his YouTube channel. He's a funny, funny comic. And he tells about, he's he's from Yemen. He's the first Yemen comic to, to be on late night television. Uh, he's on a Stephen Kilbert, uh, Colbert show. And uh, he's just, he's funny. It, listen to his stories of how growing up in Yemen, how they moved around. Then he settled in the United States. And I think no one gives you a better perspective of America than someone moving to America from another country. And it's refreshing. It's funny. And we get deep on this too. And also funny. And also the funniest thing about it was uh, his impression of uh, the Amish people when he moved to America. That was his, that was his big take. So if you get a chance, check out Ali Satan and this special of, uh, in this uh, episode of uh, Tales from a Jibidi. Woo! Hey, it's BT with Tales from a Gemini, man. Let's get right to it. I am I'm talking to a comic who, man, this guy is, I just, I'm going to tell you right now, fucking love his comedy. I mean, it's funny. It's thought provoking. And to me, no one can tell America about themselves than somebody who's not from America and now, and now they've moved over here and live in America. And this guy's comedy is nails it on the fucking head, man. He, uh, he won, he was, uh, his comedy short Zoom Legend, uh, won Best Short Mockumentary Film Award in 2021 at the Reno Film Festival. Uh, I saw his special, his dry bar special. Hilarious. Watching his dry, watching your dry bar special to me was like, it was like listening to jazz music and you're sipping on maybe a scotch and you're sitting in one of those chairs with an ottoman and got your feet up and you're just like, yeah, man. Here's my guest, Mr. Ali Sultan. How you doing there, buddy? Hey, man. This is one of the best intro I've ever had. This oh, stop great, it. Thank you. Stop it. You had... You I had- like... I'll, I'll- I like the musical comparison to jazz. That's good. I, that, that's how I feel about my comedy. It's a little jazzy. Dude, no, it, I mean, it, it just nails everything. And the, the, you are the second uh, Yemen comic I've had on here. Man, if, I, if I get one more really? Yemen comic, if I get another Yemen comic, the FBI is going to contact me. That's how many Yemen comics Bro, I've yeah, had on here. You, you had the only other Yemeni comic uh, on your podcast? Who, who was it? Was it Mike? Mike Ishak. That's right. So he was number one and you're number two, but you're the first one who's been on late night so you I, I, the, mike is a new guy i've been doing this for 10 years i'm the og bro i'm the prototype <laughs> <laughs> that's right fuck you mike <laughs> you're the originator you are the originator you're not gonna take my spot <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you know mike are you, are you from uh do you uh, have roots in detroit uh no 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 uh, well because i'm black bro no i'm just joking no because uh, i work with mike you know what's funny is that tomorrow i go to work in little rock arkansas last time i was in little rock i work with mike and that's how i remember him ah, and i remember watching okay. his comedy and i was like man you know it's such a great perspective where he comes from that you don't normally hear it yeah. you know what i mean and so i said you know what right. and this before i even did was doing this and i go i gotta if i do a podcast i gotta have this guy on and so I, it was, he was always in the back of my mind to have on. And so now I get my second comic from Yemen before I go to Arkansas. That's 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 impressive, man. You're the only podcast that had two Yemeni comedians on. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, that's a world record, man. There's only two of us. So that's, that's <laughs> there's three of us. Sorry. There's a new guy. Well, he, and I'm not even joking. There's a like total of three Yemeni comedians that I know of in America. And you've had two out of three. Well, see, I told you why the FBI will be contacting me. This, this is groundbreaking, bro. <laughs> I'm going to be the I'm, automatic. If you, if you get the third guy, you're automatically on a no flight list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the branch Ricky of human comics. That's what yeah, I want to be. It is. <laughs> Man, I love, I love it, though. Man, I mean, honestly, because I love the perspective that you guys bring because it's something new oh, yeah. and it's fresh. And what I love about you, and, and it's not... Just your comedy. Your comedy is, if you guys get a chance, please go to his, 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 his YouTube channel or check out his dry bar special. But if you get a chance, you got to check out his YouTube channel because he does great sketches. Man, your Joe Freedom character. Oh, uh, thank you, man. <laughs> hilarious. Dude, I mean, and it, it nails it. Like I said, nobody nails America more than somebody coming from another country who lives here. You know what I mean? I'm, I don't like to say immigrant. To me, it just sounds, I don't know, I don't like to say it. But from another country that comes here and, you know, you settle down, you made your roots because you look at uh, things from this country from a different perspective and it's so beautiful, bro. Right, man. It's a, it's a comic thing too. You know, I, I think most comedians think of themselves as outsiders. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. To a degree, you know, because we're people that never like fit, fit in 100% anywhere, but we can fit in a, in a lot of peop- uh, spaces. Yeah. 
and when you have the outside, you have like a journalist mind, so you can see things a little more objectively. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, you definitely. Can see what's you, you, comedians are all constantly questioning what is normal, what's not normal. That's what we do, and and um, uh, and I think uh, the, being an immigrant gives me a, a another level of that because. I just automatically, everything's weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how I long. I come you... here and I'm like, this shit is weird, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to, uh, what's the weirdest thing to you? The, uh, the, the weirdest thing, not like so much new, but just like, that's fucking weird. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, weird, what, yeah. what made you just uh, go, whoa? As, and nothing prepared me for Amish people when I came to this country, bro. I took a Greyhound bus. <laughs> I took a Greyhound bus and I thought I'd travel back in time because I didn't know any, like I didn't see Amish people on TV. I didn't know what Amish people were. I literally, like I got on a Greyhound bus. I used to date a girl in Canada. So I would take a 30 hour bus from Minneapolis to Canada. Damn. Because I'm, I'm com- I'm committed. I'm a romantic. <laughs> you see what I mean? You took a Greyhound way. bus. That's romance. <laughs> That's real romance. Because I didn't have my, my uh, like, uh, I didn't have my citizenship. And back then, you can go to Canada with an ID. Okay. So instead of flying and dealing with custom, and I didn't have the paperwork to do that, I just take a, a Greyhound bus. And I uh, don't recommend taking a Greyhound bus <laughs> for 30 hours, by the way. I don't know if you've ever been on one of those. Yes. But it's mostly like, it's 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 criminals on the loose, <laughs> uh, broke people, and then Amish people for some reason. That's like the makeup of of a Greyhound bus. Well, that's, bas- that's, basically, two that's basically two people. That's basically two people because criminals on the loose and and <laughs> I mean those are the same and poor people. Those are the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and poor people are always almost criminals on the loose, <laughs> depending on the circumstances, right? <laughs> so okay, um, and then. Um, and then, yeah, and then I, I, I really I hated the bus because you go in and you, you do feel like you're better than everybody when you get on a Greyhound bus. Like, look at these dusty motherfuckers. <laughs> but then 17 hours in, you're like, we're a family now, man. We've been together for so long. I've seen a woman give birth. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, like a, I'm a godfather to a bus baby, bro. <laughs> Greyhound is literally the spirit airlines of the road. That's what it is. That is. This is ground spirit. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I saw an Amish person and I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, I thought it was a time traveler. I was like, <laughs> are you here to save the world? <laughs> Trying to tell us a secret? What's going on here? Uh, and then I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, the Amish people are a whole thing. They don't use technology. Um, and it was uh, that was unique because, you know, you see... Like as an American, like as an immigrant, you learn about America from TV, and you know black culture dominates uh, the world. Yes, you guys create all this cool stuff. Yes, and we <laughs> we get to see it overseas. So we're immersed in, in like hip hop, R and B, uh, movies, you know, um, comedy. So you know anything about like you know from prior to Eddie Murphy to now Kevin Hart. If you're overseas, that would be like the big guy. Uh, all kinds of music. And then we learn about all this. Co- we think America is the coolest shit ever because yeah. of you, you guys, you guys' culture. And then we come here and we see Amish people, and we're like, well, "This is a, <laughs> this is a this is fraud, man. What is this shit?" Who are these who are these weird white people? Black, black people, black people created hip hop, and white people created Amish. <laughs> <laughs> Did you talk to any of them on the on the bus? Did you talk to any of them? I was fascinated, man. I, I didn't. I didn't want to talk to them because I don't want to break the uh, time continuum. You know, <laughs> if, if, if they are, a, if they are time travelers, I don't want to ruin the world. You know what I mean? I don't. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. The, the one thing he made it not, not the fact he's on a Greyhound bus. The fact that, that the weirdest thing to him. <laughs> the fucking Amish. Not the fact he's on the Greyhound bus. It's the Amish that fascinated him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Crazy. You know, you don't see that shit on TV. Hey, baby. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else. Uh, uh, suburbs are, are something that I thought were real. Like, again, if you look at America f- from an immigrant perspective and you're watching movies, mm-hmm. you, you see like, you know, L.A., you see parts of L.A., you see parts of New York, uh, maybe Vegas. You don't see like Nebraska. You don't see like <laughs> suburbs. Why? Why would you see Nebraska? So when you get here, you're, you're really in shock. You're like, shit, this is, uh, you know, 
it's kind of uh, kind of boring over here. I thought this was going to be a party. <laughs> well, well, take me back to the beginning. Take me back to the beginning. Okay, you grew up born and raised in Yemen, right? I was yeah, I was born in Yemen. So my my genetic makeup is I'm biracial, so I'm Ethiopian and Yemeni. Oh, so, I didn't know <laughs> Ethiopian. Nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so I, I, brought, I was born in Yemen. Um, I lived there for about nine or 10 years total. And mm-hmm. then I, I spent four years in Ethiopia. And then I came to the States around 14, 15. 14 turned in 15, I think. Okay. So I I, uh, I lived in both Africa and, and the Middle East. That, that That's kind of my origin. Wow. Okay. So now, now what made you come over here? What made you come over here? I, you know, uh, things were too good, man. Things were too good in Yemen. The economy was booming. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. But yeah, economy was, it's, it's um, it, you know, if you're, if you, life is interesting because something, you know, you don't know, you, you can be dealt a weird hand. You know, you could be born in North Korea and that's it for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you're born in Yemen and you try to escape as, you know, my mom is a, a brilliant, a brilliant person whom, was a big dreamer and ambitious. So she decided, obviously, it will be a better life for all of us to live in America. Yeah. And she started scheming. And eventually, she, she made it happen. It was a long journey to get here. Uh, you know, we paid a big price, but we, we eventually made it to the suburbs. Now, <laughs> now why America instead of like, instead of like London or, or uh, you know, ah, some, Canada? We, we tried, dude. I don't know if the, I think this, uh, the, what's the, what's the, the statute of limitation has gone on this. We actually illegally immigrated to London when I was a kid, when I was seven or eight. Yeah. Are you going to get in trouble for saying this? I don't think so. I think it's been a long, long ass time. Plus, I'm a comedian, so I might be joking. You don't know. I make up shit all the time. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? Uh, so, anyways, we, we lived in London. And we killed somebody, and then we <laughs> <laughs> we we, we <laughs> <laughs> you know what they reminded me of. Hold on, before you say anything, it reminded me of what, that one that one video clip that you have. You go, I'm an Uber driver, and you're talking about. Then you go, actually, I'm trying to raise money because I'm in ISIS. Man, I ain't gonna lie. I, oh, yeah, I yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. had to spit my drink out. I almost choked on that when you said that. I'm in ISIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not that's not how that joke goes. But I like it. Uh, <laughs> so we we were in London. Um, uh, I think my mom's mother passed away. Mm-hmm. So that made it really difficult. So we had to go back to Yemen. Plus, uh, we didn't really like London that much. I, I, we, I remember, like, my introduction to racism was there, as far as like white racism goes. Really? Like, like how? Um, like, what I happened? Remember, what happened? Like, in the, at the airport, they looked at my mom and they said, "Why do you people keep coming here?" And it's funny, is like I didn't even speak English, but I, I could see the attitude. And I was like, "What is she saying to you?" Because I can feel the hatred and shit. Wow, really? Um, I mean, you know, uh, you know, to her point we are illegally migrating so she's got kind of a point <laughs> <laughs> so she's not she's not 100 percent wrong but like her you know she you can tell she's talking to us like we're less than yeah um and then we went to they put us in a hotel to try to figure out what to do with us and then the hotel person tried to kick us out for no reason uh oh you try to kick us out because I, I i went down to the lobby at like 9 p.m it's crazy. It might be me. You, 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 were you a creep as a child? Uh, I was just a normal. I, I mean, as far as I knew, I guess Still I was creep. normal. I, I, <laughs> my, my producer said I'm so creepy. I was just a normal kid as far as I knew. I mean, I would just. Not, not me, bro. I was, I was trying to finger pop since the age of eight. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? You try. Right. I grew up in the streets. I grew up in the streets of Yemen. Yeah. And I, so I'd spend all my time in the streets with like, you know, in kind of a ghetto, our version of a ghetto. Yeah. So um, a lot of the older kids just like, you know, fill my mind with filth. And, you know, you, you, you know, as you're, as a child, you look at the older kids and they say the best thing in the world is girls. So you start like, you know, sexualizing and stuff like that. Yeah. You're still innocent. Right. But you're, you're, you're a bit of a creep still. Yeah, yeah. So I remember like I would go down to the lobby once and then I saw this uh, British lady and like real small, sh- like tight shorts. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. I haven't seen legs ever. I'm from Yemen, you know? I don't even like know what my cousins look like. So I'm like, we got, they got legs over here, dude. <laughs> Can't wait to come back to Yemen and tell the homies what kind of legs I've been seeing. 
So I'm down there just like look at legs. And then that's night number one. Night number two, I'm coming down looking for legs. <laughs> <laughs> and then the lobby, the manager is like, this kid is, is too loose. And then he, he just yelled at us and then told us to get the fuck out like that same night. <laughs> and my mom is just like, we don't know where to go and shit like that. So, you know, part of it is our fault. But yeah, the, the treatment wasn't that warm. And then we, jobs were hard, hard to find. Um, and, uh, I just didn't like being at that point. I just, you know, all I knew was my friends back home. Yeah. You know what I mean, so I just wanted to be, I wanted to go back and be amongst my friends who were like family to me. So <laughs> it wasn't a pleasant, um, <clears throat> experience, but now I'm going back as an adult. I'm actually going to be there, uh, the end of June to like about 10, 11 days yeah. and doing comedy there. So I'm, ex- I'm actually excited to nice. and see it from a fresh perspective and as an adult who's got money. Yeah. Oh, nice, man. That's going to yeah. be so cool. If it could be emotional for you. Emotional. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'll try my first, uh, first order of business is this is a Pakistani kid who punched me in, in third grade. Yeah. I'm going to try to find that motherfucker, bro. <laughs> and choke him out. <laughs> third grade. Hey, yeah. Let it go, man. Third let grade. it go. I hold the grudge, bro. I won't let it go. Cause, <laughs> cause you let go. You you can let go of a fight, right? Right. But you can't let go of somebody like sucker punches you and runs away. There's something about running away after you hit someone. There's nothing that worse than a sucker. Away. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a sucker punch. Be That's a, what it is. You be, give me a chance. Yes. To defend myself. I've lost many. Yeah, I lost many fights, and I don't hold those. Yeah. But the fact that you, I was trying. He was a brown dude, so I was a brown dude, and it was like a white school. So I was like, oh, man, we're going to connect. So I'm, I'm coming in with a big smile. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and just bam, punched me in the eye and ran away. <laughs> and then I was like, and then the fucked up part, I was like, oh, maybe it was my attitude is what I thought. So I was like, I'm going to come in even more friendly. Yeah. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Second day, punches me again, gives me a black eye, runs away, and I can never find this dude. And I think about that dude at least once a month. Do, do, do you think you know who he looked like? I mean, that's been at least 30 years, so. Ah, dude, dude, I've, 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 I've developed the software. I, <laughs> I sketch. <laughs> it's turning to a stereotype now. I look like. It's burning in my mind, dude. I'm going to be going, I'm going to be, I might, you know, I might beat up a uh, wrong Uber driver, but I'm going to get to it. Eventually, I'm going to get to him. You think he's still there? You think he's still, or did, or did he move? You think he's still there? I, well, if my prayers work, he should be dead. <laughs> but <laughs> damn, man, let it go, bro. Let it go. Let it go. I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I got to talk to my therapist about this. Because <laughs> I'm like joking right now, but I really feel angry. No, you know what? No, I can tell that. No, that was, that was some real shit right there. Just now, I can feel like, nah, nah, I'm good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, it, there's some stuff you can't let go. Just today, there's today at the gym, I keep thinking about this dude who it came in and he, and he pushed my phone to the side. I could get this phone out of here. And it was right next to his locker. And to, I, and I should have punched him. And, and I, every day I think about, I should have fucking, I should have slapped his fucking, or my brother said, I should have monkey stomped his ass, but I let it, but I let it go. And every time I work out, I just think of him and I just lift weights like this, man. And I think about him and I swear to God, I wish I had a fucking one to slap him. So yeah, I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know the yeah. feeling. Yeah. But you know, it's, a, it's the bad, right thing is to not do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, from on here. From no, here. Okay. I used to have I have really bad like road rage because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm a very thoughtful driver. I can tell. I really, I'm, I'm really considerate about everybody's space. If you need to get somewhere, I'm the guy that will like hold his car down if I see someone trying to like cut through. You know, I'm really nice driver. You're a sweetheart. I, it, it bothers me to my core when people like you know, you know, just like. Have no regard to your life. Yes. Get real aggressive, and and you know I, I would lose my shit. You know what I mean? I'll like, <laughs> I really want to fight people when I'm driving, but then I then I, I try to rephrase it now, and it, and it, and and something to help you in real life too, is I everybody's a star of their own movie. That's what it is, right? Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your yeah. life. This is your life starting you. Yes. And. If your movie is really shitty, yes, you try to bring like you try to bring me as an extra in your shitty movie. That's what you're doing. So when you cut in with traffic or you honk at me or give me the finger, it's because you're fucking miserable. 
and if I answer and I and I and I take part in your really shitty movie, I'm losing. Does that make sense? So now I see it as like if somebody's bothering me on the road, I just like I go, you know, it sucks to be in an Adam Sandler movie, bro. Good luck. <laughs> This is the Matrix. I'm doing well. <laughs> no, you're, you're in the last Matrix. That that was a shitty movie. The last Matrix. Was the, shit. No, that's that. that yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> not that, the original one. Yeah. So basically, you're in the Matrix well, like, Resurrection, and you don't want to be in a shitty movie. I, that's a great perspective yeah, why, to have. Right? Why? Why? You know? Why would I take? Why do? Why would I be in? Leave my movie that's going well. A great movie. Be an extra, an extra in your shitty independent film. Starring you, I'm like, you know, that's how I see it. If that makes any sense. No, dude, that's a great perspective. And, and I, you know what? For me, honestly, it works for me is, and it sounds so like just you know way out there, like hippie like. But honestly, it's because I ride my motorcycle all the time, and even today, what happened is dude pull out in front of me and ride a motorcycle, and that's that's par for the course. And I think yeah. yoga with the with the breathing and the meditation part of the yoga, oh, nice. it helps. You just go, and you go, oh man, I got and you go, and that man, I'm, I'm telling you that breath. Yeah, Yoga's one, two, great. Great. yeah, and, and dude, it helps so much. I mean, it, 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 I, I was in Italy one time and, and, and I, I should have been dead because this person just cut in front of me and just instinctively I went Damn. and I breathed in and go, and I went up to the other lane and, no, and nobody, and, and, and that person, I guess, knew I was coming over and they didn't move and I had about uh-huh. this much space for my wheel and their front bumper. Wow. But I kept it like, like that. And I mean, you kept it zen. Were you, you riding a bike in Italy? Yeah, I was riding a motorcycle in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, you're wild, dude. Yeah, I went up to the Stelvio Pass for my birthday. So I rented a motorcycle, went up to the wow. Stelvio Pass. Yes, yes. It was a That's great time. That's amazing. You know how to live, man. Man, dude, you have to because we don't know when it, we don't know when, it, when, when the time's going to be up. So I want to live. I want to, you know what I want to do? I want to, uh, hopefully, hopefully what I ha- want, I w- here's what I want to happen. At that last minute when you know time is up and you look over and there's that Grim Reaper, like, you know, like the, the image and, and they're about to tap you on the shoulder. I want just to go, okay. God, I don't want anything to like, I wish I would. I want to go, okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm ready. You're gonna be like, I'm good. I'm dead. Yeah, you, you don't want to die, un, uncontent or feel like you haven't done everything you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sense. That's a good way to live. Yeah, I still want to travel. I still want to do. I mean, there's so much. I want to do. So, that's why I call this Gemini Tales for Gemini because I'm a Gemini. I want to do fucking everything, bro. I, like I love comedy, but I also want to do. You know, I want to do movies and I want to. I want to race. I want to find it. Uh, find some time in between there to race. And I want to do this and I want to do that. So it's like I want to do so much good things. For you, man. So when it's all good over, you, man. I want that when I go. Okay, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. So for you, you don't want you don't want you don't want the angel of death to tap you and be like, "Hold up, I gotta use the bathroom." Real quick. <laughs> run away. <laughs> you try to get away and they go, "I knew this motherfucker." It happens all the time. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so man, when did you come into comedy, man? Because okay, so you come over here and I know this story, but I want to know what what was the comic that made you go, "I want to try this." Gallagher, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I was going to say, are you fucking sick? Imagine, imagine if Gallagher is what did it for me. I saw that watermelon, bro, and it touched my heart. <laughs> you're the, you're the Yemeni Gallagher. You, can you imagine the fan base you would have? The Yemeni. <laughs> the the, um, the Yemeni Gallagher. I, I, I think the first ever stand up I've ever seen because the stand up doesn't exist in Yemen. Yeah. Uh, the first time I saw it, the first person that I got into TV wise was Conan O'Brien. Okay. Because I didn't speak English yet, and he was very physical and he was really silly and funny. Yeah. And then I was learning English as as time went on, and then he had Jim Gaffigan. Oh yes. And I'd have never seen Santa before, but I was like, "This is fucking this guy's cool, man." I like, I don't know what he's doing, but I it feels kinder to how I feel. Right. And. Um, he was doing a stand up and I was like, I like this a lot. And I started like writing my own, you know, routines at 15 with like half a broken English, you know? Right. And, and fantasizing to be on Conan and doing that and, and acting like Conan and stuff like that. So as soon as I saw it, it sparked an interest. Um, but I, I really thought I was going to be an academic. I thought I was going to be like a, a, th- a theoretical physicist and all that stuff. Well, what is um, that? What is a theoretical physicist? What What is that? That's why I got out, man. I didn't know what the fuck it was. I was like, this is, this is, lo- this is hard, man. <laughs> this is hard. What is this? Theoretical what? <laughs> Quantum. Um, so I, I really liked science and I wanted, and I was very creative. I knew that I was a creative person. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I have a great imagination. So I think I, I just thought of imagination of a way to 
uh, you know, like you ha- you take what knowledge that that, that exists, mm-hmm. and imagination gives you that that extra you know step to open a new door to knowledge, yes. and that's what I thought was theoretical physics. You know, you we we take what we know, and then you let your imagina- imagination you use mathematics and you use physics, and you come with a new idea that you know that breaks through, like you know like the theory of relativity and all that stuff, right? It, it, it opens new possibilities. <coughs> um, but, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't, if I, if I grew up in like a, if, so if I grew up with good resources mm-hmm. and went to a proper school and I had all these things, I probably, that would have been the person I would become. Uh, but luckily, you know, I grew up in poverty and shit. So, <laughs> yeah. so I went from that to like, you know, man, cracking jokes and stuff like that. Comedy still works in that sense. Uh, you still use your imagination. You still use your creativity and writing and stuff like that. So it's satisfying. Now, do, do you think that it helped you break in with, okay, you moved to, you moved to Minnesota. Minnesota is like, you can't get no oh, wider than shit. that. You know? I forgot. Sorry. One, one quick story. I saw Jim Gaffigan at an Arab fest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He came and did an Arab comedy fest in New York. Yeah. And he, he went up and he said, I'm actually Lebanese. And it was like, well, funny. Yeah. So I worked with him uh, in that context. And then after the show, I went up to him. And I was like, hey, J- J- Jim, I, 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 you're the first comedian I've ever seen. You're the reason I, I started the itch for comedy. And then he goes, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my bad, player. <laughs> Good luck with no health insurance. <laughs> Was, was he, uh, sorry, your question? No, no, no. Go ahead with the Jim Gaffigan story. Was, was he cool after that? Would you, you, have you guys established a relationship or anything? Not at all. I'm, I'm bad. At, I'm not the, the greatest networker and stuff like that. I just, I don't like bothering people, you know? Yeah. So I, I know, you know, like, I was like, hey, I'll say this real quick. Hi. And then I just kind of mind my business. I'm not the, you know, there's some guys are like, what's up, Jim? You want to have coffee tomorrow? Like, I'm not that guy. <laughs> Dude, I, I think you'd be a perfect opener for him, man. I mean, and, and and don't get me wrong. Don't take it the wrong way. You know, you're not an opener, but I think you'd be perfect. You would be. I did. I'm going to, I can open. He's a big dude. He's a big, uh, he's a legend. Of course I'll open. Yeah, but I mean, I think it would open so many more, <laughs> even more, more doors. But man, dude, you're ready to pop. Okay, so you moved to Minnesota. I mean, it, you can't get any wider than Minnesota. I mean, that's that's Wonder you, Bread. You got to balance. You go Africa. You go yeah, man. You have to balance that shit out, dude. Dude, that's Wonder Bread white with mayonnaise. War torn countries. You know, experience all. You have to balance it with Midwest energy, which is chill and boring. Boring and cold. Boring, cold, and just passive aggressive, bro. Now, wh- 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 where, where in Minnesota? Where? Uh, I lived all over the places. Um, I lived in Minneapolis. Uh, <laughs> I lived in a city called Coon Rapids. Oh, I, in, I know uh, where that is. Yeah, <laughs> I've been all over Minnesota. Brooklyn Park. Yeah, all over. Yeah, I, I know Minnesota pretty well. Yeah. Matter of fact, my first place I rode a uh, snowmobile was in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Really? I wow. did I did that for uh for Thanksgiving and this dude just said, Hey, you wanna ride my sled? And I said, Okay. And I took it out in the lake, man. And he, and uh and that's I was like sexual. That sounds <laughs> real sexual. You wanna ride my sled? Yeah. You don't say yes to that. You just said yes. <laughs> yeah, I did. I said yeah. I thought it was Santa Claus. He said, You wanna ride my sled? I said, okay. He was a he was, a, he was about to. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Dude. A strange, like, white man came up to me and said, Hey, you want to run my sled? I'd be like, Go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, you know, hey, as in Rome, do as the Romans do. So I took it out and I took it out on, on the lake and it was weird because I was riding, it was fun. And then I stopped and I heard a crackling. And I kept on going. Then I got back inside and the lady goes, You do go to that side of the lake. I go, Yeah. She goes, You know, that, that's not frozen yet. And I was like, oh, oh shit. yeah, man. That was when I came back and I was like, man, I'm glad you told me that you now. Could've, you could have died. This is why I don't trust strangers, bro. No, tra- white dude that said ride their sled. Never trust a white dude that says ride his sled. <laughs> hey, yeah, that was almost going to be a hate crime. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they, they wouldn't have found me. They wouldn't have found me. <laughs> yeah. So how'd you, like, how'd you like Minnesota? I mean, was it any growing uh, up there? Did you have any I love problems? Min- I, lo- I love Minnesota, man. Uh, I like this. Uh, I, I wish it was warmer. That's my only issue. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of cold, a lot of lack of sun. And, you know, we have like three months of amazing weather. Like the summer here is un- unbeatable. But a lot of lakes. Uh, people, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty like white and Midwestern. Um, you know, there's cool elements to it. I like the comedy scene here. I love the comedy here. I like um, um, it's got a little bit of diversity. Uh, it has 
I feel like such an artistic city, like that's where Prince is from. That's right. where Bob Dylan is from. Um, um, I'm trying to think about, oh, the My Pillow guy is from, <laughs> from here. You know? <laughs> yeah. Say, say what you want to say about the dude is creative. You know? <laughs> a real artist. That piece of shit. Um, a piece of shit. He Actually, I, I used to have a My Pillow uh, myself. It's not that good. That's the thing. It's not a good pillow. Did, did you throw it out? Once you find out he was, he yeah, I was like, I was like, I had, I had it. I was like, it looks, it feels like a crackhead made it, and then I found <laughs> out he was into crack, and I was like, oh, it makes sense. This is a meth pillow. <laughs> hey, did you um? Oh, you know the thing you about know where it says, you know where it says made in China. His yeah. is just a swastika. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what is it like? I like men. Matter of fact. How, most of my girlfriends have always come from Minnesota. I love Minnesota. And the weirdest thing about it is, of all the shit that went down during the pandemic, it was weird that it happened in Minnesota. And with the cop, like, what what was up with the police in Minnesota? I've never had a problem with the police, but I didn't realize they were that bad. And they were just over, so overtly, I feel that overtly racist. I mean, did you have any, have any problems with that? Yeah, sorry about that uh, little technical difficulty. I was talking to you about the, uh, the the police in Minneapolis, man. Like, it's weird because that is one of my favorite Midwestern cities. It really is. I've never had any problems there. But, man, now I saw what happened, you know, like, actually, it's the movement that changed um, I say changed America, but it started this whole thing. So, man, maybe you you have a better yeah. perspective because you live there and you're also brown. You're you know you're a brown person. So, yeah, what's your take on that, man? First of all, I don't think it's a coincidence that with the uh, uh, video cut out, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the Minneapolis Police Department was involved in that. Uh, they second knew. of all, <laughs> they, they knew. Uh, I live in I live in South Minneapolis. So I'm actually um, uh, less than a mile from where the George uh, Floyd incident happened. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I know the star that called the cops on him. I know some of the people that work there. You know, I'm familiar with that area pretty well. It's a, I'm in the same area, South Minneapolis. That's where I live. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't know how, I mean, I, I, I was there when I, when I was in there that same day, but I was there for the movements. I was protesting. Uh, taking pho photographs of the thing because yeah, when I, when I started to happen, they painted it. You know, they just kept showing looters and and violence and whatever, but they never showed the protests. Right. I thought it was like um, weird that they did that. They 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 it's, it felt like the they were trying to hijack the movement and and make it and uh, something that they it could be discredited because it was really beautiful, man. Like well, 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 you know, not not the incident, but the the way people got together, all kinds of people, you know, I, I would be there at these protests and you see, you see in conservatives, you see in liberals, you see in white, Asian, young, old, everybody just being incredibly peaceful, incredibly beautiful, you know? And then, uh, and then what would happen is at, at night, you know, there'd be like a curfew and shit. So like the reasonable people go back home and then the wild, the, the, you get the young bloods come, th come through. Yeah. And, and there's like, it's an electric, it's a charged energy. You've, you've been in the places where like the energy is charged. Yes. Yes. And it takes, a, just a, it just takes a match to, to Ign burn things down. Ignite it. Yeah. And that's how it felt. Yeah. To ignite it. So at night it was be a lot of young people and then a lot of like, even like white dudes from the suburbs were just there for chaos, anarchists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it felt, it was weird. Like it felt like some people were there just to create conflict. It felt like some people were there to start shit and then deliver, you know, derail the movement and whatnot. So I have perspective, a little bit of perspective of the protest. As far as cops goes, um, um, I am... Um, you know, I'm a brown dude. I'm, you know, I don't have it as bad as you. Uh, but I would say, like, even you know, with driving, I, I have I've had a lot of issues with like suburban cops mostly. Mm -hmm. You know, and the you know, I, I got you know, I get pulled over for weird, you know, for no reason sometimes. Somebody would pull, like I remember like me and my friend who's Jamaican, we went to an area called Maple Grove. Yeah, and I just bought like a, a kind of like a '92 Honda Civic or some shit, mm -hmm. and he just pulled us, pulled us over for no reason. And, and he's like, what are you guys doing here? Just cause he saw, you know, uh, you know, a black and a brown person in the car together. He just assumed 
we're there for, you know, up to no good or whatever, you right. know? And I was like, why are you pulling? And I was like, well, this should be a reason for you to pull us over. He's like, is this your car? And he just got, kind of questioned me about my car. I'm like, dude, it's a 1992 Honda Civic. You don't think I can acquire $300, dude? Yeah. And I mean, my glasses are more expensive than the car. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can afford it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you, you have shit like that. And um, uh, I mean, in my, within my first year of driving in the suburbs, I got three tickets. You know, one of them was justified. It was a speeding ticket. But the other two was complete bullshit. Like, I would, I would just pull out from the gas station. And uh, like the first one, I just, I was at the gas station. I turned off my headlights. But I have to, I left it like in the middle section. So where you can see the lights inside, but mm. it's not on all the way. Right. And then... As I'm pulling out, I realize that it's not on all the way. I turn it on. I get on the road. I get pulled over immediately. So this person, this cop gave me a ticket for having my lights off for about 10 seconds. You know, shit like that. You're like, this feels personal. This doesn't feel like, you know what I mean? This yeah. doesn't feel like you're just doing your civil duty here or your civil service. It just, just feels like you're fucking with people. Yeah. Or you're trying to make me feel un- un- unwelcomed or whatever. So, you know, um, I, I got arrested once because they thought, they thought I was like a Mexican guy they were looking for, you know, like sh- wild shit like this. Bro. Yeah, but you turn it into comedy. The guy was like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, part of uh, my jokes. Yeah. And the dude was like older. Like I was 19 and he was like 35 and to be clear, Mexican. Like, he, he was, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is on the Mexican. Yeah. Forget the fact that he, they were, they were 11 years apart. This dude was Mexican. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me when you say that. I know what you mean. That's what makes it hilarious. It's, it's wild, bro. It's like it's like how do you? You know what I mean? That that means it, it made me. It, what what taught me is I'm a very non-threatening dude. You know yeah. I mean? You see me, you know, like I shouldn't look like a, a threat to you. I'm right. Very, you know, I'm gentle, soft-spoken. But the fact that that for him to for the cop to make that mistake, he has to be in a state of fear. Mm-hmm. Where he's thinking irrationally, because if you if you're just being rational, they'll be like, "All right, this guy's clearly not a 35 year old Mexican man, and he's not on a bicycle. He can do just you know deductive reasoning." But when when cops, it feels like they they the one of the bigger issues I think they come from like a really far suburb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they they come and police police a city that they're not from, and they're from like an hour away from, from the city. And then they grew up with no exposure. So their, re- their reference to what black and people are uh, and brown people are is from like movies, which portray us as negative. You know I mean? I'm a terrorist. You're a thug or whatever. And so they have, you know, the country doesn't really, the country breeds racism. You know, it's almost, sometimes it almost feels like how can they be better when the system itself is, is feeding them wrong information constantly. You got Fox news, you got, uh, you know, media, even the news sometimes can can portray portray us in a, in a in a really negative matter. And the opposite of of humanizing is othering. So, like, if somebody looks at you as a, a thing in a box, if he, they put you in a box, they're they're automatically othering you, which is the opposite of humanizing humanizing you. Mm-hmm. And that's a dangerous place to be. So they come from the suburbs. They have no exposure. They go to white high schools. Uh, they think black people are thugs and blah, blah, blah. And then they show up and it's a dangerous job. Yeah, right. Is a very dangerous job. Yeah. Because you also have a lot, you have criminals also that you got to deal with, right? Yes. And it seems like, you know, if you're, if you don't have a trained eye, I can see, I don't understand it, but I can see that you can perceive someone to be a threat when they're not. Um, and I feel like if you don't know how to deal with danger. You don't have a good danger radar. Like I have a great danger radar. Yeah. I can smell danger from like a mile. I think it's, I think it's innate. I think it's innate when you, when you are a person of color and if you're outside of you or just a person of color, period, you just kind of feel it. You know, it's kind of like when you smell rain in the air, you know, it's like, it's going to rain. But that's what I'm saying. So it's like when you get these like guys who never even been in a, like one of my roommates used to be, want to be, he used to want to be a cop. And I'm like, I asked him, I was like, David, have you ever been in a fight? He goes, no. Nah. I was like, do you have any like sort of like, have you ever had a fight flight situation? He's like, no. I'm like, I don't think you're making a good decision, dude. 
because it's a dangerous job and you're gonna look out for trouble. And if you don't know your radar, if you don't have a good radar, you might perceive something to be dangerous when it when, when it's not. And then kill an eight year old or nine year old who's holding like a water gun or some shit like that, you know? Yeah. So it's and I guess in a simple way, we have a lot of pussies that are cops and they shouldn't be cops. Now, how do you take people that don't know danger is and you, people that don't have exposure of other diversity, you know, or other races and stuff like that. I, 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 th- I used to have a bit, a bit where like, if before you graduate the police academy, you should do like a, a, a four week, um, you know, uh, thing where you live with a black family. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe you try to put out a mixtape. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you live, you live in the community, you're about to police, you live with black people. And then you start humanizing the people around you instead of saying like, oh, that's a thug. I was like, yo, that's, you know. You know what, you know, you know what would be great? That'd be camps. a, <laughs> hey, that would be a great uh, skit, man. Have like a mini camp. You know, fall players have mini camp. Uh, you, have, <laughs> you have a mini camp. You have to yeah, live in like the, 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 the place you go to police. You have to live there for like a week or two. That's your mini camp. Yeah, you got to go do two days. Yeah, and, and like like white people love living in like dangerous elements. I was like, you go to islands that are deserted. You you you, you know what I mean? They have like shows like Survival, uh, Alone. I'm like, well, how about the how about the hood? Can you live in the hood for like a, a week? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a, they. That's our that, that's our new story. We're gonna pitch. That's the new Survivor. There you go, man. That's a new survivor. And then, you know, if you don't get invited to the cookout afterwards, you're out of the academy, bro. <laughs> there you go, man. That, that's what I think it is. Once they know, once they get in that environment and make friends or whatever or get to know people, I think it would help. I just don't think they want to. It's, it's it, Well, you know, it's a lot of elements, right? This is a very complicated matter. So you have the system itself, which is kind of corrupt. Yeah. You know, when you have something like um, – uh, qualified immunity, which basically gives a cop the the you know the the freedom to kill and get away with murder. Yeah, like that's a really dangerous law. That's bad for everybody, not just like black people. Yeah, right? everybody. It, literally, it, it gets away. You get away with with murder, but you know that's like a huge one. So like within the system itself is is corrupt. You know, you get too much power, and power corrupts no matter who you are. Yes, you don't have to be a racist. You can be yeah. an egomaniac and power trippy, and and having that type of power, you're gonna start abusing it. Um, so like stuff like that need to go. I think, um, um, uh, you know, exposure is good. There should be some sort of, you know, um, like screening for people that don't even, you know, I feel like if you never met a black person, how would you, why well, you shouldn't be a cop? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now do you? Yeah, I, I want to see. I want to see two black friends before you become a cop. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, and and those black friends have to meet. Cause you ever notice that weird energy when, like, if you're white yeah. or something, and you have a black friend, but they, but they, you have two separate black friends, and they meet for the first time. It's that weird energy. Like they, they feel like there should like only be one. Hey man, that's my white dude. Yeah, that's my white dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And they're like pulling. No, he's mine. He's mine. And they're pulling my. It's, it's like it's like a custody. Yeah, that same. It, you ever seen, it's the same energy, like you ever go to like, you do comedy in a small town that has no diversity. Yeah. And then there's that one black dude and he sees you and he's sizing you up. Like, that's my town, bro. <laughs> dude, I, I've had that. As a matter of fact. It's I, my territory, bro. <laughs> I, I was in Oregon once. They're and my whites. I was in Oregon once at this bar and it was this one, you know, there's always that one chick that liked black dudes. And so she went out with the other black dude. And so I came into town. And so she started, starts dancing with me and I'm like, why is this chick dancing with me? And her boyfriend was all of I'm thinking maybe six eight six nine. I'm being and I'm being I'm being Dang. generous, and he's at probably at least about three twenty five. And he's looking at me, and I'm uh-huh. like, "Is that your ex?" And she goes, "Yeah." She turned around, started flipping him off, and he starts coming toward the dance floor toward me. And the bouncers are holding him back. They're going, "I'm seeing I'm seeing them doing it." I go, "This is not a good sign." I literally sprinted off the dance floor. I wanted no part of that shit, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I've been there. I was going to ask you. Then you have you ever have any like pushback? I've seen your comedy, and I've seen a little, you know, the, the interaction with the hecklers, and it's always seemed kind of nice. But has it ever gotten a little yeah. look a little dangerous? God, uh, like oh, like somebody trying to fight me? No, well, yeah, well, I've you had, know, just a little where it gets a little mean, nah, a little mean, or a little like okay, this is go a different way. Oh, like from my end or from their end? Uh, from your end? Oh, for your, sure. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I, I, you go all over all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you, you mean you mean you mean to be funny all the time, right? But like right. sometimes you know, for me, it's like at a comedy show. Some people don't understand the the concept of heckling. They think heckling means 
saying, hey, you're not funny or booing you or shit, shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, most people think that's the concept of heckling is that, but heckling is also talking to your the person in, in the same table as you, um, talking, responding to things, even in a positive manner. You know, like people, you know, always be like, oh, that's funny. Oh, I have a friend like that, like, <laughs> like a fucking idiot. Like, all right. Like, you know how they say black people talk at movies, but white people talk at comedy shows. And it, and it makes, you know what I mean? Yes. Right? Like, yes. they, they, you know what I mean? They make fun of black people who are talking at movies, but you guys do it when I'm, I have feelings. A movie doesn't have a feeling, you know what I mean? Yes. I got feel, I'm right here, dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stop interrupting my flow. <laughs> so it's a lot of times like a drunk middle aged white woman, or like usually a lot of white girls are, are notorious for hackling, just like, you know, just positive heckling or interrupting or talking to their team or trying to be the center of attention. No, positive uh, heckling. I, I pretty, love that. Positive heckling. Yeah, positive heckling. <laughs> but it's not real positive. Uh, you know, for me, oh, they want to, they say things like, I'm trying to make the show better. I'm like, bitch, I'm hilarious. I don't need your help. Um, so, you know, have I called somebody a C word? Of course, once or twice. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, I try, I try to be reasonable at first I'm like, and I'll explain it. You know, I'm, you know, when initially when I started, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, go aggressive right away. Yeah. But now I, I try to like, you know, if but it sucks sometimes if you say you, you need a, an important five minute tape. So it has to be just jokes beginning and yes. trying to submit, say for like late night or something. Yeah. And it needs to be precise and it needs to be exactly five minutes. And one person going like, hey, oh, like being obnoxious and shit like that. It fucks up the whole tape. Mm -hmm. I've been there. You fucked up. You fucked up the time. You fucked up the material. And now, you know, I just, I just, you know, put in all this work trying to make something happen. I might have a day deadline because, you know, you don't know this industry. Sometimes they go, we need a tape by tomorrow. And then there goes that tape and there goes that opportunity to get on TV or whatever. So it's not good. Don't talk to comics unless they talk to you and they ask you a question. Well, and when it happens, I, I try to like teach them that. I'm like, hey, I'm okay. Don't need to talk. Da, da, da. If I'm on a road and it's like wild, I just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. And and if I get too mean, guess what? You are not taught. You won't stop talking. So I, I have to, you know, eventually whatever. Put them in place. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, nobody paid to see you talk. Hey, I want to know. Honest. What I want to know is, and, and let me see how you t uh, did this. When you did, when, when you did, actually, you were the first. I'm telling my listeners, the first Yemen comic to do late night with Stephen Colbert. What I want to know is, how nervous were you, and how did you overcome those fears? Because I, I, uh, me personally, my me personally, every time I did it, you know, you go over yourself. At least from my perspective, I went over myself, and then and then when that uh -huh. dude with the with the headphones and the you know the the stage hand when he goes. Like this, or they go, I'm sorry, they, when they go like this, <laughs> I, I automatically, my, my, my mouth goes dry and I can't swallow. And I'm going to get that, uh, yeah. that last swallow in. I'm like, and, and then you go, go dry and they go, and then that light comes on and there's that weird silence. So how did you do it? And how did, yeah. how did it go for you? Yeah, I, I, um, it was definitely the most high pressure shit I've ever done. I mean, I've done stuff for like Comedy Central. I've done, you know, a couple like specials and stuff. Um, and they're easier because, you know, at least you get 30 minutes or you get a longer set, you know. Like the, the the scary thing about late night is it's you got to be so precise. Yes, you send in you send in the amount of jokes that you're gonna do, and the wording has to be like reviewed. And you be like sometimes they'll be like you can't say this word, you can't say this word. You have to like everything is controlled. Right. So you got to be really precise and present and personable at the same moment. Right. So you don't want to be out there and sound like you're reading from a, a, a page. You want to be like you know. But you only have five minutes, you know, you're a co comic, you know, we can all agree that it usually takes about 15 minutes for people to kind of get your vibe. When yeah. You do comedy. Yeah. Right. It takes right. some time for them to understand your rhythm and your point of view and vibe you out. So to do that in five minutes and to be precise on every single word and timing and to be within the window of time that they tell you to do. Yeah. Um, is, is a lot of fucking pressure because like if you mess up one word. Now you're in your you're in your head. Yes, you're you're thinking instead of being, and you know you, you might get more nervous and stuff like that. So like it's a lot of pressure. But I I just remember just meditating and and trying to be calm and trust in myself that I, I remember all the jokes and and do do it justice. Yes, and and and, and roll with the audience, meaning like 
roll with the audience to an extent, like, you know, time it with the audience, but not too much where like it looks weird on, on video. Cause sometimes like the audience will take these applause breaks. And if you let it like die out. Yeah. On, on when you, you know, somebody else watches it on YouTube, they're like, his timing is weird. Why is he like taking so long? Cause you can't, with late night, you can't really hear the audience as well. Like the YouTube version yeah. is not, does not sound like the live version. Right. The live version, it's explosive, bro. Yeah. They're fucking dying. They're clapping. It's real loud. But like the video version is very like dimmed version of that. So if you don't hear, if you're not there with me and you don't see that I had to pause for an applause break, mm-hmm. it does look like I'm waiting too long. So I have to like, you know, I have to like, you know, work with the audience and then also work for the, you know, what it's going to look like later. No, I and, saw you know, that. Just trusted, trusted my instincts, you know. I know. I love that. I, I thought in the very beginning and, the, and you, you, you described it exact um, perfectly because in the very beginning, I felt like you were like. They, they were applauding and you were like, okay, let me get to this. And they were it's like, it was a weird applaud. Like they were applauding and then they wanted to go, you know, yeah. more. And you were like, all right, let me get to my shit. Yeah. And then once you started yeah. though, bro, I thought it was great. Cause it was great to watch the people laugh and just like, you know, and buckle yeah, right. over. And I thought it was great pacing. I thought it was a great set. I was like, yeah, that's my man's. That's my man's. Thank you, man. Thank you, dude. No, Thank I don't, you. I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm very Proud of how it came out. I don't know where I. I don't know where you came into my radar, dude. I really don't. But I just know I was like. Oh. I think I. Th- I remember when you followed me. You followed me the day that Chad Daniels posted about me. That's it. it. That's it. And I looked you up and I go, <laughs> this motherfucker here. I, I remember because I remember Chad Daniels. I go, this dude right here. And I looked this shit up. I go, oh yeah, I definitely want you on. You know, because I just because I just I I love no I love that perspective. And I lo- like I said, I just love how you like I said. No one tells America about America better than people who aren't from. America who now live in America. You know what I mean? It, it's mm. beautiful. And you and you and you pinpoint, they can't say, are oh, you full of shit? Like, no, you do. This is who we are. And I love it's like in a way, at least my, the way I take it, it's like in a way, it's like, see how stupid you are. But without saying how stupid you are, but but see how stupid you guys are without saying they're stupid. But see, this is how you think. And it's like, and I laugh no, inside. I, 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 I try, I try really, I try not to like be patronizing. Oh, I know. Tr- Trust me, I know. Trust but, me. I'm just honest about, you know, I'm trying to be honest honest about you know the things you know because i consider myself an american too so you know if i'm making an american i'm making fun of myself too because i'm i'm part of this now i've lived here longer than i have lived anywhere um and i and i do love being here and i love this country and i think a big part of being a patriot is truly like you know reporting on things that don't make sense sometimes you know what i mean like so a lot of people go like oh yeah if you don't like it here then fucking go back to yemen or whatever you know like when i protest or but i think that part of being a patriot is questioning the system always you know what i mean this this country started because they didn't like you know uh, they had you know the boston tea party and shit like that so you you shouldn't be you know like a, you shouldn't just agree with everything and be blind and follow like yes. a, these political leaders um you should be able to speak your mind when you don't agree about some stuff and it's it's a it's a healthy thing even though like when people like complain about like Things that are not relatively important, like, you know, some people will be like, what about the turtles? You know, <laughs> we need to use we need to use paper straws. But that's a good thing. The fact that we have that, that means that the country is doing so well that we have the capacity to think about turtles and shit like that. No one in Yemen is like, man, what about these turtles, though? Like everybody there is like, you know, I'm trying to not to die, you know, so be, you know, be happy that we're complaining. <laughs> But the turtles, though, you know, that's for some reason that would be a great T-shirt. <laughs> but those turtles, though, what, what about the, what about them turtles, though? <laughs> <laughs> you should put that on a T-shirt what about them turtles, though. What about what about? Them? I think that'd be a great bit, man. I, I fucking love I love your comedy. I love where you're going with it. What's your goals? Now? I mean, what's your overall goal? Some people, I mean. It might, some people want to act. Some people want to be. I mean, your sketches are great. Your fucking writing is pinpoint. Your stand up uh, is great. Where do you want to go with it? I'm a stand up first. So, like my my love is my true love is stand up. Okay. I love stand up, and I want to be like I want to be really good at stand up. I want to be like in five years, I want to be one of those top dudes. You know, when you talk about like who's the best in the country, I want to be like mentioned in that category. Yeah, and that's that's all I want. I just want to be really good at my craft, and I want to be. Um, able to do this at the highest level I can and continue to write and continue to grow. I don't 
need anything else from it. Like, I'm not trying to be like fucking Kevin Hart famous. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, a big center of uh, attention. I just want to be happy, you know, and what makes me happy is doing what I love. And, but I also want security. I want to be able to like be, be 50, 60, 70 and be able to do comedy and, and not worry about retirement and stuff like that. So the key, the, the point of success for me is, is having security to do what I love long term. And, and what's and being able to like get a house? Right. Yeah. I want to like just a simple life, man. Like whatever you do to selling, like the people, you know, like I have friends that like sell insurance and shit like that. Yeah. I want to be able to get what they get mm-hmm. doing what I love. I don't need a mansion. I just need a, you know, a good sizable home. So, um, I want to, I want to, I want to ha- not have to worry about things. Ideally, I would like to like buy my mom a house, oh, fuck you know, if yeah. I get to that level and yeah. take care of my, the people that are close to me. I have people back home that need uh, a lot of support. So yeah, I would like to make money and use that money to, uh, provide a better life for me and for the people that are around me. And I would like to be respected at my craft and, and to do it justice and find other ways to tell my story, whether it's like through like a sketch or a TV concept or a movie. How, however, I, I can tell a story that's, that's, you know, funny and, you know, important. That's, that's cool with me. Or so, it doesn't even need to be important, but funny and, 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 and it shows a, a, maybe a perspective that America doesn't see often. So, so, so in your mind, what like do you, I, what do you have to do? What do you, what do you think you have to do better as a comic to, to be one of the top for, in your mind, what do you think you have to do better? Me? Uh, what I do better? I just the time, man. Just, you just can like, is, you know, there's no way around comedy. You crawl through your stomach and you yeah. learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 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 my, what I have to do is continue to beat who I am. Yeah. Going, I, I, my job is to not plateau. Yes. My job is to continue to write. Yes. Yes. Continue yes. To yes. Write. Yeah. And to not get comfortable, you know, like sometimes, you know, you write an hour and you get real comfortable. You're like this, I can do this forever. I'm trying to like, you know I mean? Follow the full steps of, you know, you know, like you see all these comics that, come in with an hour every two, three years, like Bill Burr and CK and Chappelle and all these guys. I, I just want to, I just want to follow that. Listen, we're going to have to go here in a minute. Yeah. If you can give me your top five comics, top five of all time in your mind, in your mind, top five in your <laughs> mind. Don't be influenced. Uh, no, easy, easy. Number one, prior, the greatest my, to ever do it. My man. The vulnerability, the, the vulnerability that he, like that dude is such a, First of all, the first truth teller. Yes. He took like, he was incredibly honest in a, in a time where comedy was not that. Mm-hmm. Comedy was very shallow at the time. He was, he was so ahead of his time. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand why Pryor is the greatest because they're like, well, I've seen people like that, but you don't understand the reason you've seen people like him because it's because he did it. Yeah. And his level of honesty was still like hard to reach. I like truth tellers. So like, I like Pryor. Um, like Patrice O'Neill. Is My our, God. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Patrice is like, is a recent version of prior. It's yeah. Like a, more of an edge, but, but that dude is incredible. Genius of comedy. Um, Patrice, <clears throat> I say Chris Rock has been great of keeping like a long jeopardy career. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, you know, uh, bigger and blacker, all these like specials are so good and groundbreaking and stuff like that. So I put, you got to put them up there just by, based on the body of work. Uh, Dave Chappelle, I'm starting to like him less now, but he was my top guy forever. Yeah. He was my, he's like, I, you know, I used to like, he had a lot of influence as far as like, he made a really love comedy. And I think he's like funny wise, pound for pound funniness. I don't think there's anyone funnier than him. But I think right now is a little kind of like a little caught up in his legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel you. I feel you. That's a whole. Much, that's for a whole other conversation. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Too too much too much ego going on. But he's he's incredible. Um, uh, and then the fifth spot, I always like. I would rotate a bunch of people. I'd say Wanda Sykes can get in there. I'd say Bill Burr can be in there. CK can be in there. Yes. Um, um, uh, who else? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I, won't, I won't say Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would leave that a spot open between like anybody can get it. That, that, that spot is not; it's reserved for the next person. 
I'll let, if you keep going the way you are, man, I honestly, I, I can't see you not being there. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart, bro. Oh, thank you, man. I, I'm, oh, thank I'm, you, man. I love it's watching your clips. If you guys get a chance, what? go to his Instagram at Ali Satan. Go to his YouTube. Watch his skit, man. The, I, I, I can't get into it about the, we got to get out of here. But watch the, 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 uh, the, 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 not the sheik, but the, uh, what's the, uh, the, uh, the Prince Muhammad. The Prince? The Prince Muhammad <laughs> doing comedy. And what are you? Journalists. Yes. Get, and they got, so, man. Watch, my watch, God! Watch, 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 watch the video that uh, that's the reason I would never go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, if you got the chance, go to his YouTube channel, go to his Instagram, watch his clips. I promise you, he will be one of I your appreciate you, the best comics. Hey, Ali, a lot, man. Thank Big you so much for your time, brother. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, no, thank you so thank much for making pleasure. time for me. I, I, we're gonna be best friends after this. I promise you that. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you much. Lots. Appreciate you, Watts. Appreciate sure you guys watching Tales from a Gemini. I'm BT. Thank you so much. You know, we say it by the time you know the word. Pay.